Shalom, Israel. How y'all doing? Doing all right? See some new faces in the building. All praise be to the Most High for that. Shalom to everybody online, in and out of state, out of the country. Let's get into it. It's going to be a hot topic tonight. The title of tonight's lesson, this evening's lesson is, Teach Me How to Love. Teach Me How to Love. Part One. Part One. It's been a little while. Part one is dedicated to the women. So you don't have to feel like you're getting blindsided. All right, let's go to, uh, let's go to Titus. How many of y'all want to learn how to love tonight? All right, seen a couple of, couple of hands. <laughs> how many of y'all already know how to love? Okay. No hands, huh? All right. Let's go to Titus chapter 2. Let's start at verse 1. Titus chapter 2, verse 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. So when we speak, we want to always speak things that become sound doctrine, solid, truthful real, firm doctrine. We know that doctrine is what we believe. All right, read on. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate. So it says the aged men are supposed to be sober. Sober, not just sober from, you know, from any type of uh, substance, but sober-minded, right? Meaning we're supposed to be aware, cognizant of what's going on around us. Uh, the Bible says grave, that means serious, temperate, meaning not quick to fly off the handle. All right, go ahead. Sound in faith, uh huh, in charity, and patience. So sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. Read on. The aged women likewise. So hold on. All of those things, the aged woman also should actually have those things within our character all right but it's gonna be a little bit more go ahead that they be in behavior as becoming holiness so one of the things is a uh, women should be uh in behavior that become becometh holiness we know what holiness is anything that's dedicated to the service of the most high all right go ahead not False accusers. So shouldn't be false accusers, read. Not given to much wine. Uh-huh, so you shouldn't be getting toe up. Shouldn't be playing problem. Some of y'all know what that is. You know the song, I'm toe up. I shouldn't be off the chain with it. Go ahead. Teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. When you look into that, that word good, it's talking about teachers of the law should be teaching folks about the law. Go ahead. That they may teach the young women. That they may teach who? The young women. You are supposed to teach the young women what? To be sober. To be sober. They're supposed to learn how to be sober as well. They should be mindful. They should be aware of what's going on. Go ahead. To love their husbands. To do what? To love their husbands. That's where this lesson comes in, teaching them how to love. Because a lot of times... Women and men, we think that we know how to love. We saw it on TV. Some of y'all used to watch the Disney Channel. You watch, you seen all of them uh, Lizzie McGuire's and all, whatever show you was watching. It's the other uh, white guy, Zach Efron. Cosby's. Seen all, you seen all of the different, depending on what time you was in. You seen Cosby, you seen whoever you saw. You learn how to love. A lot of us learn how to love partially from TV partially from Hollywood, from the movies. Some of us also learn to love from seeing our parents or 
seeing a parent, <laughs> depending on the situation, right? But what we don't realize a lot of times, many of us come from broken homes. Sometimes you may not have necessarily come from a broken home, but there were issues. Generationally, a lot of times we've been scarred. We really don't know how to love, you know? We assume that we know how to love, but the Bible says that it's a must that the aged women, aged, most high willing in actual age, but also aged in, you know, the spirit. They're supposed to teach, teach the younger women how to love, love their husbands and love who? To love their children. And how to love their children. I got this. I got this. Do you really have this? How well are you doing at loving your husband? Because that's the main part that we're going to talk about tonight. So let's go to First Peter. Y'all ain't got no tomatoes up in here tonight, right? Got no cans. Or <laughs> First Peter chapter 3. And we're going to read, start at verse 1. We'll read 1 through 6. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Uh -huh. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. So the Bible, I'm going to keep it uncut. The Bible says be in subjection to your husbands. I know that sounds like a bad word to some people. Because in this society, they teach you otherwise. You ain't no dog. Subjection, obey. What you talking about? You pay bills too. That's a wicked mind state. How, how can we think to be so advanced and think to be so intelligent that we got a better way than what the Most High set forward? Think about that. For all these people, they'll tell you in a in flash that they godly, that they God-fearing people, that they so-called Christians. But it'll go against God's word in a heartbeat. We'll disregard everything that the Most High says here and go with what they pass or said. Straight up. So the Bible says that, that, that the wives be in subjection to your own husbands. Read. That if any obey not the word, they also may be without, excuse me, they also may be without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So the Bible says that if any obey not the word. So if you got someone else outside of this right here, you know, you talking to somebody else, you trying to tell them about the true gospel. Right. Right. You got your man. He's doing his thing. He's trying to spread this word. They kind of not really hearing him. But the moment that they look at you and the moment that he step away and they make small talk with you, your conversation should be so on point. You should exude godliness, true godliness, to the point where just by the way you speak, and I'm not talking about that, that, that talk that some of our sisters give to make yourself look like you holy, look like you godly, but they should really be able to see the love of the Most High and the love of Yahweh Shai and the love that you have for your husband and through your words say, you know what? Man, I might have to look into that because the way y'all rolling, that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing when you see someone and you see their wife and their wife doesn't have any ill to say about them. Their wife is giving such an excellent representation of that man. They're building up that man's character. That's a beautiful thing. It's not a beautiful thing where you, that nigga, well, he needs to. That's the problem. We got too much of that. Every, every, uh, too many of our women want to talk about what he need to do. And that's not your place. If anything, that was your father's place. Your father should have been the one to help you to find a man and figure out if he had it together. But once you decided to marry him, it's no longer your place to tell him what he need to do. And we're going to get that in scripture tonight. All right, go ahead. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. So the conversation of the wives alone should be enough to win people, to win souls out there. They should say, you know what, they got it together. First, I, would, I didn't know about them Jakes, 
But the way they roll and the way they women represent them, I got to get down with that. I need that in my life. Verse 2. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Coupled with fear. You can't be shameless. I don't fear nobody. They can't tell me. Negative. That should, that's not representative of our nation and what we stood for and what the Most High set, up, set us up to be. That's out of order. Read. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outwardly, outward adorning of plating the hair and wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. So he's not saying, okay, he's, he's not saying that you can't have nice things. He's not saying that you can't put on nice things. That's not what he's saying. But what he's saying is this. What should be more important to you is not your actual apparel and your bags. What should be more important to you is your spirit. Beautifying your spirit. Right? Making sure your spirit is on point. What are you feeding your spirit? If all you're doing is watching nonsense on TV and you're never taking the time to really feel yourself Fill your spirit with anything that's, that's good information, anything that can help you to uplift those that you come in contact with, then there's a problem. And that's why a lot of our women are too focused on materialistic things. Sometimes you're too focused on going here and going there. And sometimes you just got to be still. Go ahead. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. The hidden man of the heart, of the mind. What's your mind like? Her Malcolm say, he said, don't nobody want a woman with a TV mind. You got to advance your mind. A lot of women, the first thing, oh, man, they want is sex. Well, what else do you have to offer them outside of sex? If you can't even hold an intelligent conversation with them, then you sh definitely shouldn't be griping about that. We got to step up. We talk about we building a nation. It ain't a whole lot of building going on. Go ahead. And that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of meek and quiet spirit. A meek and a quiet spirit. To be meek is to be humble and patient. And a quiet spirit. You know when to say what you need to say. And you also know when to... Is power in that. Is wisdom in that. Is grace in that. Go ahead. Which is in the sight of God of great price. In the sight of the most high, a great price. It's a value thing in the most, uh, to the most high. Well, I, ain't, I ain't shutting up. If it's something on my mind, I'm going to speak my mind. That's your problem. You feel like you always need to speak your mind, like your, like your opinion always matters. Oh, that's chauvinistic. Nah, because a man's opinion don't always matter either. He got to know when to close his mouth too. But you shouldn't be at all extra boisterous. Go ahead. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. So you, you, you say you want to be an Israelite, right? Okay, yeah, you found out that you're an Israelite according to your DNA. But what's your spirit like? Is you Israel faking? Or are you really trying to be an Israelite? You got to look at the old school because they're a lot closer to what the old women, our foremothers, how they were operating. They weren't operating off of this nonsense that we're seeing out here. They didn't operate like that. They understood how to have their feet steady at home and how to take care of home. They understood the importance of being a wife and a mother. They understood the importance of being a support. Even not too long ago, when you go back to the 60s and you saw how the Black Panther Party was moving, the women understood that the, the, the men could not do what they were doing without the proper support. They understood that. So what's wrong with us today? It's got to be fixed. Go ahead. Verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, uh -huh. calling him Lord. Calling him what? Lord. I ain't calling that nigga Lord. Only Lord I know is Jesus Christ. Don't even know what the word Lord mean. 
She had such respect and adoration for that man that she had no problem calling him Lord because he's your head according to the Bible. It ain't nothing wrong with calling him Lord, calling him your king or whatever you want, to, whatever you, your thing is. But you can't just call him that and post it on social media, but you don't treat him like that. That's a no-no. Go ahead. Whose daughters ye are, uh -huh. as long as ye do well. As long as you do well. Because you could be a, a daughter of Sarah by DNA, but if you ain't doing well, <laughs> nobody wants to claim you. Most high tell you that. Most high say, I love those who love me. <laughs> you don't have to be loved. Don't nobody owe you that. He said, I'll, that's what the Most High said. Because people think he got it all misconstrued. Oh, you know, God love everybody. No, God don't love everybody. That ain't biblical. That's nowhere in scripture. He says, I love those who love me. So why do we feel so entitled today? Think about that. And this message might not be as much for you as it might be for the one next to you. But go ahead. Was that all of that? No. And are not afraid with any amazement. Go from there. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Boy, I got it quiet up in here. No, I still love y'all, right? This, this is real love. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Let's start at verse 1. Let me get there. Boy, that time moving fast. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 1. Yep. For all this I consider in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. Go ahead. All things come alike to all. There is one even to the righteousness, to the righteous. And to the wicked. So there's one event to the righteous and to the wicked. Go ahead. To the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not, as is the good. So is the sinner and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. So what he's saying is he said, you know what? It's still one event, meaning what? You're still going to die. <laughs> That's the event that he's speaking on. He says, we all got to go. But go ahead. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. That there is one event unto all. Ye also, ye also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And madness is in their heart. While they live and after that. They go to the end. So he said, man, with all the chaos in the world, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, everybody's going to die. Yeah, Obviously, we also know that, you know, most high willing, we in that time, uh, some of you guys may not actually see death. But throughout the ages, it was already understood that for the most part, everybody was going to go. So go ahead. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Now that's a heavy statement. He says, for a living, a living dog is better than a dead lion. So in other words, you got to use some wisdom. Sometimes we lose our lives over things that are really not worth it. You know, make sure if you're going to lose your life, you lose your life for a good cause. Don't lose your life getting caught up in some nonsense. Go ahead. For the living know that they shall die. But the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. You see that? When we alive, we thinking about all these things. But when you're gone, you ain't thinking about none of it. Nothing. Go ahead. Also, their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Oh, you, you, man, you spent so much energy into hating this person, and now you're gone? It ain't no more hate. <laughs> you utilized all of that energy for nothing. Go ahead. Neither have they any more portion 
forever in anything that is done under the sun. Because anything in this living world is of none of your concern at that point. Go ahead. Go thy way. Eat, the, eat thy bread with joy uh -huh. and drink thy wine with a merry heart. Go ahead. For God knoweth, excuse me, for God now accepted thy work. So he's giving you some wisdom. He says, look, man, go thy way. Eat thy bread with joy. Because some of us, man, we just get so bent out of shape with life. And you look at the next person, their problem's ten times worse than yours. You make something so small seem so bad. He said, man, go on and eat your bread with joy. Learn how to love yourself and love your life <laughs> and love your situation. He said, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. Go get you something to drink. Chill out. Go ahead. Verse 8. Let thy garment be always white. So now when he talks about that, it talks about that in the book of Revelation. Let your garment always be white like your tabs, right? Does it mean physically? Like your boy, your quatiza with your all white garment on. <laughs> Said I make hits. It's not talking about literally. That white is talking about righteousness. Always be clothed in that righteousness. How many of y'all always keep your white garments on? You're always operating in righteousness. You better figure it out. Go ahead. And let thy head lack no ointment. Lack no ointment, meaning y'all should always should be anointed. Hamashiach, Christ, anointed. We're supposed to be Christians, followers of the anointed, the anointed ones. You're supposed to be following after the example of our king. But go ahead. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all thy days of thy life. Excuse me. All the days of thy life of thy vanity. So now he was talking to man this whole time. He's talking to you, right? Because that's the thing that you got to understand. A man spends, for the most part, most men spend their lives working, laboring, building. Sometimes you're not as romantic as she might like you to be because you're trying to figure things out. You're trying to leave a legacy worth leaving. At the end of the day, you are the provider. You got to figure it out. Everybody's looking at you. If it fails, it's on you. So he says, look, after all of that, he says, man, if you labor and you're doing all of the things that you're supposed to do, man, the least you can do is make sure that you enjoy it. When you get a chance, read the whole book of Ecclesiastes. It's what it's talking about. He said, man, you got to enjoy your life. So he says, live joyfully. Now he goes into the aspect of the wife. He says, live joyfully, not live with a whole lot of problems. Not living, arguing every day, mean mugging one another. He says, read it one more time. Live joyfully. Live what? Live joyfully. Live what? Live jo joyfully. Who? Joyfully. I know some of y'all went to that bootleg church, said, make a joyful noise <laughs> unto the Lord. The Bible says that a man should be able to live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity. Why does he say of thy vanity, man? Because at the end of the day, there's an aspect of vanity here. We think that we build and build and build in here. He says, your rest ain't here. He said, your rest is in the kingdom. He says, we going back home. I got to give you that glorified body. He said, that's where your rest is, but you so caught up here. He said, this is vanity right here, but go ahead which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity. So now here's the thing that he's saying. What he's going into, he says, man, if you ain't, if you, you might not have nothing else going for you in life, but you should at least be able to live joyfully with your wife. Of all of the vanities in this world, that's the one thing that you should be able to go home to and know that you're going to have some peace and some joy. Now, why is that not the situation in most Israelite relationships? I'm waiting. Why do we see so much fighting and power struggle in, in Israelite relationships? Something is out of whack. Go ahead. For that is thy portion 
in this life. He said, that's your portion, man, in this life. You know what a portion is, right? A portion is an allotment, a share. That's your part. You get a piece of the pie. That's your piece of the pie. You know how you cut the piece up? Kids old enough, they get to looking at everybody else's piece. His piece, let me get that piece. Your portion. You want to make sure you get your portion. You don't want to be left out. He said, that's supposed to be your good pie, your good pizza. That's your portion. So why we be so frowned up when we eating our portion? Has the portion been spoiled? What's going on? Go ahead. And in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. And in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. So go from there. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 31 and verse 4. So we speak in the portions right now. 2 Chronicles, keep up with me. 31 and verse 4. Second Chronicles 31 verse 4. Uh -huh. Moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the Levites. So there go that portion again. He said he commanded the people to make sure they gave them that portion. Go ahead. That they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. So he said, man, make sure you give them a portion so that they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. In other words, they had a lot that they did for the nation. And you didn't want them to get discouraged. You wanted them to say, man, the most high truly is real and the people are blessing us accordingly. Don't we like to get paid when we work? How many of y'all like to work 40 hours and not get a paycheck? How many of y'all has that ever happened to? And how did you feel? <laughs> Nobody want to go to work and not get a paycheck. You'd be upset. You'd be all up in HR. <laughs> so here's the thing. The Bible understands. It says, look, you got to give them their portion so that they be encouraged. A portion is supposed to give you an aspect of encouragement. Our wives are our portion. So we should have encouragement for our wives. Don't that make sense? But the opposite is happening. Something's out of whack. All right. Go from there. Get a, go to the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26. I hope y'all love me. Am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Ecclesiastes chapter 26, and we're going to read 1 through 4. Verse 1. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. Say, blessed is that man that has a virtuous wife. Read. For the number of his, for the number of his, excuse me. For the number of his days shall be double. For the number of his days shall be double. Just in having a virtue, that's the thing that y'all mitigate. The thing that a lot of our people don't understand. Like, oh, you hear the virtuous woman talking, you be like, ah. Yeah, I know, I know. I done heard it all. Heard it all before. You heard all that, huh? But he said, look, a virtuous woman would double your days. Now, men, if you was in your right mind, you're going to go with the woman that look good, but you know she got a whole lot of this, and it's hard to get her to do those little things that you want her to do, knowing that she's going to cut your, your lifespan in half. <laughs> you're going to see 50 with her, but with this virtuous one, you're going to see 100. Which one you taking? I hate to give it to you in layman's, but I got I to gotta keep it real. Don't that make sense? Ladies, who would you take? You rather live 50 or you rather live 100? 100 good ones. I'd rather live that 100. Go ahead. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. He's going to fulfill the years of his life and he's going to have peace. Because she rejoicing them. She ain't, man, you need to do this. You, uh, he don't never do it. He this, he that. That's not rejoicing your husband. You should be doing the opposite. Girl, my husband, he the best at this. Just like a high kid does. It's crazy because a kid got it at first. And then they grow up watching some of their mamas, how they talk about the daddies. And then all of a sudden, they tone change. 
first the kid, like nobody could be my daddy. <laughs> Nobody better. My daddy better than yours and this. My daddy do this. My daddy do that. And the mama, mm, he all right. Picture wrong. Go ahead. Verse three. Uh -huh. A good wife is a good portion. Let's get it. Come on. Which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. Them that fear the Lord. Read on. Whether a man be rich or poor. Uh-huh. If he have a good heart. Now, hold on. We're going to take this one. We're going to take our time on this one. It says, whether a man be rich or poor. Because a lot of us over here, you don't want that poor man. Raise your hand if you, you can't, you, man, you can't wait to marry a poor man. <laughs> oh, he good and poor girl. I want him. You don't want no poor man. But the Bible says whether a man be rich, because you got a doctrine out there that says, you ain't King David. <laughs> you ain't King David. You ain't got nothing. Bible says whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart, a good mind toward the Lord, read. He shall at all times rejoice with the cheerful continent. He should be rejoicing. He should be happy. Meaning what? It don't matter how much money you got in your bank account. The wife is supposed to make sure that they having the time of their life, that they happy. That's how some folks can go and move. Up. And the thing is, this is the thing, man. It's hard when we're in the midst of this right here. Sometimes when you move out and you move to Timbuktu and you're in the, out in the middle of nowhere, you disconnect from the nonsense. And you're able to just live and not have much, but have more than enough. We can do that here, but it gets hard because you get to watching your TV shows, you're watching the commercials. You want this, you want that, you see she got that bag. You see this dress, you see them shoes. You see them going to eat here. You watch this TV show and they went there, they was romantic, they did this, they did that. And you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's the problem. But it's a woman's job according to this Bible. This is how our foremothers wrote. It didn't matter. It didn't matter if we were sleeping on a cot. It was going to be the happiest of times. Where that woman go? Because we want her back. That's the woman we got to get back. It's in there. But that's what we got to get back to. I told you I was going to give it to you uncut. They going to call it how they want to call it. They going to say what they want to say. Somebody probably mad online, but I got to say it like the Bible said. I want that woman back. And my older sisters, I see some older faces. You know what I'm talking about because you know how your mama's operated. Y'all didn't have nothing, but you was happy. That's what we got to get back to. That was all of that. Go to um, get Proverbs chapter 15. In verse 17. In the age where they got all of these women, the Nicki Minaj's, and what's that other one that can't talk? Cardi B. Cardi B. <laughs> yeah, I can't understand what she be saying. In the age with all of them and everybody looking at them and glorifying them, I don't want that. I want a righteous woman. 15 and 17. Verse 17. Yep. Better is a dinner of herbs with love. Hold on. I want some steak. <laughs> some filet mignon. <laughs> Read it one more time. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is. He says, you ain't got nothing but herbs on your plate. Go ahead. Than a stalled ox. Than a what? Than a stalled ox. Go ahead. And hatred therewith. He said, you can have a whole ox, plenty of meat, and you got hatred in that house. He said, I'd rather have nothing but herbs. Give me some lentils. He said, long as I got peace. That's right. Long as I got peace <laughs> and love. He said, that's where I want to be. And we got to understand that, ladies, women. We got to have peace in these houses. There's too many house, Israelite households with no peace. 
How we in this truth and we ain't got peace in our households? How is that? You give the truth a bad name. And then every time you got to talk about this person and that person and your husband, who in the world going to want to come into the truth after hearing your conversation? If I ain't talking to you, then don't, don't be offended. Straight up. But if I'm talking to you, then I want you to check yourself. Who's going to, honestly, who's going to want to come into this life hearing that kind of conversation? Think about it. Go from there. Go to, um, stay in Proverbs. Let's get chapter 5. And we're going to start at uh, verse 15. We'll get 15 through 19. Proverbs 5, verse 15. Uh -huh. Drink water out of thine own cistern. So, y'all pay attention to this. The Bible says, drink water out of thine own citron. Go ahead. And running water out of thine own well. He said, man, drink water out of your own well. Watch what he's talking about. Go ahead. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad. Uh-huh. Excuse me. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad uh -huh. and rivers of water in the streets. Go ahead. Let them be only thine own and not strangers. Why is he saying this? Your own water. Don't be drinking nobody else's water. Don't be trying to go and get their water sweeter over there. They got that alkaline over there. He said, just drink your own water. He said, drink your own water. He says, let them be only th thine own and not strangers with thee he said don't worry about everybody else's water he said keep your water to yourself drink your own water let's see what he's talking about read let thy fountains be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth in other words he said don't be sharing your wife getting back to that wife thing he said read it one more time let thy fountains be blessed uh-huh let thy fountain be blessed read and rejoice with the wife of thy youth and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Shouldn't be like, oh, here she come. It should be a rejoicing with her. All right, go ahead. Let her be as a loving hind. Now y'all pay attention. Y'all pay attention because I'm going to give it to you straight. Let her be what? Let her be a, as the loving hind uh -huh. and pleasant robe. So as the loving hind and the pleasant roe. What is a hind? A hind is like a, a deer or an antelope. All right? A loving hind and a, a roe is like a, a goat. A pleasant goat. What is he talking about? When they're in mating season. That's why he uses the word loving and pleasant. Go ahead. Let her breast satisfy thee. At all times. So we don't have to go X-rated up in here, but we understand what this is talking about in relation to a husband and a wife. Because we live in an age in a, in a society where women, a lot of women hold themselves, I'll say it like that, as a carrot in front of the man and dangle that thing. And that shouldn't be so. I, you got the power. That ain't according to these, these scriptures. Well, we, you know, dang, all you want to do is, you know what, according to these scriptures, if that's all, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I don't have to say too much. Keep it as PG, at least PG-13 as I can. But for y'all young women, the Bible says, read it one more time. I'm trying to tell you how to love according to these scriptures. Because a lot, I'm, I'm serious. Oh, I just got this problem and that. The problem is your approach and your mindset. You don't, look, you ain't trying to do that. But then that man looking at somebody else, it is getting that. What you think that man thinking? Come on. We ain't no fools. We not, we, we ain't even got to play that game. Read, read it one more time. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times at all times not just every other day once a week whenever you feel like it when he on good behavior <laughs> you ought to you, you you love that song uh uh, uh when beyonce and them said uh what they say let me cater to you 
He was vibing. But why ain't our women catering to their men? All my old school women up in here, didn't they cater to their man back in the days? Wasn't that a standard? That was already understood. Heard somebody say, say, uh, uh, ask the older woman, why, what, why is it that the, uh, she always uh, makes sure her husband gets a plate first and not the kids? Said, said and, and, and she ended up replying something to the effect of, you show them a bad example and your children become uh, uh, entitled, feeling a sense of entitlement. And, and, and you're not showing them how important the head is. You got to show them that he's first. That you're going to take care of him first. He's the strength. He's the protector. He's the provider. That's what we need. Stop worrying about your own every day. Because it really it ain't even your needs. It's your wants. You don't want another woman coming and doing this for your man. But you, you refuse to do it. What sense does that make? I'm speaking to sisters tonight. What sense does that make when you ain't willing to do the things that's pleasing unto his heart? And it don't take much. Because a lot of times women get put it out, oh, it's just so much. It's just so hard. If it was so hard for you, I don't know why it wasn't that hard for our foremothers. I don't know why it wasn't hard a couple of decades ago. Was it hard back then, mama? So what's going on today? How, how did it become accelerated and hard? It ain't hard. It's not hard. It's how you have peace. Straight up. Go ahead. And be thou ravished always with her love. So you know what that means, right? Be thou ravished. What does it mean to be ravished? Come on, man. This, this Bible, I'm, I, ain't, I ain't reading the uh, Playboy magazine. I'm reading the Bible, the Holy Bible. Cause you you act like like you like you don't know I don't know what to do. Well, the Bible tells you what to do. Be thou ravished always <laughs> with her love. Cause you want it. Oh, he just ain't romantic enough. Newsflash: You supposed to be the one providing that the majority of the time. So when he comes and gives it to you, oh, it's gonna be a beautiful thing. He gonna go above and beyond. That's the thing, men forever have gone above and beyond just like the Esther story and every other story a man will give you the world just to please you when you go out of your way to make sure he's taken care of that's how it's always worked so why is it that the younger generation you don't want to adhere to that straight up that was all of that correct go from there go to um Let's go to Songs of Solomon, chapter 4. Hope these seats ain't getting empty on me. Songs of Solomon, chapter 4. Let's get uh, verse 9 through 15. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 9. Thou hast ravished my heart. What? Thou hast ravished my heart. Go ahead. My sister. Woo, hold on. He said, you ain't, you not only ravished me on a physical level, but you also ravished my mind. You got me all messed up. You intrigue me. You mentally stimulate me. That's what he means, his heart, his mind. You got to stimulate your man mentally. Go ahead. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, uh -huh. my spouse. Go ahead. Thou hast ravished my heart with one thing. Excuse me. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes. Uh huh. With one chain of thy neck. Go ahead. How fair is thy love. Go ahead. My sister, my spouse. Read on. How much better is thy love than wine? He said, "Man, it ain't it ain't a tequila expensive enough that could compare." <laughs> Jake's know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Said they ain't got nothing good, good, good enough. Says something about her love. It's intoxicating. Don't you want that? He said, I don't, I don't need none of that. I just need you. Go ahead. And the smell of thy ointment 
than all spices. Say just your smell. I just melt when I smell you. Let me just smell. Let me be close, on, close up to you. I just want to sniff you. Go ahead. Thy lips, oh my spouse. Uh huh. Drop as the honeycomb. Say, oh, just to kiss. You know, you get so, so you done been with the, in the relationship so long, you don't even kiss no more. You don't even kiss no. It ain't passionate no more. Said her lips, man, she keep that passionate kiss. She working on that kiss. And when she give you that kiss, it's like, the, like a honeycomb. It's sweet. Go ahead. Honey and milk are under thy tongue. Uh-huh. And the smell of Breath thy... Breath smelling good. Breath smelling good. You smelling good. Go ahead. And the smell of thy garments uh -huh. is the smell of Lebanon. Go ahead. A garden enclosed is my sister. Uh-huh. My spouse. A spring shut up. A fountain seal. He said, man, like a garden, because when you go to a garden, it's so beautiful. Then that garden got so many beautiful fruits and things that you could partake in and the waters. He said, but it's enclosed. All of that goodness is just for me. Don't nobody else get to come in this garden. He said, it's, it's, it's exclusive. <laughs> you ain't, don't, know, don't nobody else got the passcode. Right. Go ahead. Thy, thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates uh -huh. with pleasant fruits. Go ahead. Comfort, excuse me, comfort with spike, uh, excuse me, comfort with spike nard. Drop down to verse 16. Awake, O north wind, uh -huh. and come thou south blow up on my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Uh-huh. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat of his pleasant fruit. Eat of his pleasant fruits. Go ahead. Bob, man, the Bible is heavy. Men, they like, I love this list. <laughs> Bible is heavy. Let's go from there. Go to Psalm chapter 45. Y'all all right? Yeah, yeah. Psalm chapter 45, and let's get 10 and 11. <laughs> I'll get it another time. 10 and 11. Psalms 45 and verse 10. Uh -huh. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thy ear. Forget also thy own people and thy father's house. Because that's another thing. You get mad and then you talking about your daddy and your mom and them and this and that and Bible says, man, when you when you come into that situation where you, you've married this man, all of that stuff comes secondary. Your husband come first. That's what the Bible is talking about. Read. So shall thy king greatly desire thy beauty. That's my king. That's my king. Yeah. If you treat him like a king, he's going to desire your beauty. Watch this. Read on. For he is thy Lord. He is thy Lord. Just like Sarah said, my Lord. Go ahead. And worship thou him. And what? And worship thou him. I ain't worshiping thou nigga. Read it one more time. And worship thou him. You ought to be worshiping your husband. Meaning what? Yeah, you know he ain't the most high. But when you look at worship, you should have that admiration. You should have that, that, that respect and that honor that you give to him. That's what it's supposed to be. You shouldn't be undermining him. You shouldn't be thinking that you're smarter than him. And at times where you do have something that he might not have, you're doing everything you can to offer it up so that you can help build him and help make his, his uh, things that he's trying to build uh, come to fruition. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to be. Uh, go from there. Go to uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, and let's get 22 through 24. Ephesians 5 and 22. Yep. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. As unto who? As unto the Lord. That, that confirms it. So you don't think that I'm pulling the rabbit out the hat. I'm trying to seduce y'all and tell y'all some stuff. You're like, man, the Bible don't say that. Took that out of context. Go ahead. For the husband is the head of the wife. Uh-huh. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Uh-huh. And he is the savior of the body. So let's see what the correlation is. Read that. Verse 24. Therefore, 
as the church is subject unto Christ. Pay attention. As the church is subject unto Christ, read. So let the wives be their own, be to their own husbands in everything. Whoa. How many of us women are actually subject unto our husbands in the same way that Israel is supposed to be subject unto Christ? We go above and beyond for Christ. Ah, oh, I love me some Jesus. When you thought Jesus was in the bootleg church, you was shouting in midnight prayer and on the prayer line for four o'clock in the morning. Some of y'all was churching. Whatever you thought he was in, you man, you would go above and beyond. Not my Jesus. Can't say nothing bad about my Jesus. But the minute somebody say something sideways about your husband, you ain't you ain't giving that same. Something wrong with that. Set the correlation the same way that you deal the churches with Christ. You supposed to be with your husband. Would you pop off with Jesus? Huh? Sister say H E double L no. But you pop off with your husband. Something wrong with that. Something is seriously wrong with that. Uh, go from there. Go to uh, Proverbs twenty and thirteen. Shift gears a little bit. Like I said, if the shoe fit, wear it. If it don't fit, then why are you tripping? Proverbs 20 and 13. If you, if you ain't Cinderella, <laughs> if the glass slipper don't fit, don't trip. Proverbs 20 and 13. Let not sleep, lest thou come to Ooh. poverty. Hold on. Read one more time. Love not sleep. Love not sleep. Don't love sleep. Go ahead. Lest thou come to poverty. Lest you, lest you what? Lest thou come to poverty. What is the Bible saying? Love not sleep. Don't be lazy. People, man, our people, they get, it's, them is fighting words. You call them lazy. <laughs> lazy. Who you calling lazy? Yeah, some of us are lazy. Well, many of us are lazy. True fit, wear it. Me and lazy too. Some of us lazy because of our health and some of us are lazy for various different reasons. Whatever it is, we got to figure it out. So the Bible says, love not sleep. Why? Lest thou come to poverty. Lest you come to poverty. What, what, what is that saying? Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. You wondering why you always broke? You wondering why you always struggling? Because you won't get up and get out and get something. I just don't know what I'm going to do. You still in the bed while everybody else up getting it. Go ahead. Open thine eyes and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Said if you just open your eyes, if you wake your tail up, <laughs> you can go get that money. You can make that thing work. Can't be lazy. And I'm still the sisters. I'm going to have the brothers part two. I'm talking to y'all right now, though. Can't be lazy. Can't be lazy. I know some of y'all in y'all head because they, oh, well, it's his job to provide. Well, let's see what the Bible says. Stay in Proverbs 31. <laughs> see, I break it down like this, man. And, 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 and a lot of our women today don't like this because... It's not what society projects. Literally, we are all servants, whether you like it or not. We're servants. I ain't nobody. Yeah, you are. But I'm an employee. What you think an employee is? <laughs> a servant. It's a fancy way of saying servant. Who's your employer? Who your master? I ain't got no man. I ain't got no boss. Right? Here's the thing. We're all servants. A woman, the most high created her as a help. All right? A help. As the Bible says, a help and a stay. All right? A woman, in two words, can be defined as a domestic 
servant. You know what a domestic servant is? And the, and the problem is there is no honor in servitude and there is no honor in being a wife and a mother these days. There is no honor in being a keeper at home. And that's, that's why we struggle as a nation to try to build anything. Because nobody want to play their part. That's like your hand all of a sudden get mad because it can't be the foot. I want to wear some Nikes. Then what I'm going to grab with a pair of Nikes on? What my hand's going to be able to grab with a pair of shell toes on? Huh? Straight up. I can't even do no wickedness like that. Hand all of a sudden, he want to be the knee. You ain't got what it takes to be a knee. Straight up, neck want to be the booty. <laughs> Calves want to be the bicep. You sound like some foolishness, don't it? So why we try to operate in every fashion besides what the Most High tells us he wants us to operate in? What kind of sense does that make? You, get what I'm, you see what I'm getting at? He says, look, I created you to be a domestic servant. A domestic servant means what? Somebody raise your hand and tell me real quick. Women. I need one of y'all to tell me what domestic means. What does domestic mean? Get a mic over there, please. Real quick. The water. Right? Bezosh. Just give it to somebody. There you go. <laughs> Domestic. Uh, uh, pertaining to home. What? Pertaining to home. You you on point. Pertaining to the house and all of the affairs of the house. The house itself, keeping the house, being a wife, being a mother. That's what it. That's what anybody else got a different definition than that. Huh? Give me the definition from the dictionary. Go ahead. Domestic relating to the to the running of a home Woo. family relation. There you go. Read it one more time. Uh, relating to the running of a home or to family relations. And to family relations. The home and family relations. And to be honest, what's, what's so crazy about it a lot of our women like, eh. it takes a lot to do that. It's a lot of work that goes into that. So that's why I tip my hat off when it's being done. But a lot of it is being neglected by our women today. Straight up. And I know everybody don't want to say it, but I'm going to be the one to tell you. You might, like, you might be mad at me for a couple of Sabbaths, but... We'll be good. <laughs> we'll be good in a little bit. Smile at you a couple of times and maybe you'll lighten up. <laughs> but the thing is, it's the truth. We got to get back to what the Most High created us to be. He created you guys to be domestic servants. The man ain't got peace and the man cannot build. He cannot be who he needs to be without you doing what you got to do. So let's read that. Let's start at verse 10, and let's read 10 through 18, and we're going to jump down. Proverbs 31 and 10. Uh-huh. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find her? Huh? Anybody. Who can find a virtuous woman? Go ahead. For her price is far above rubies. Far above rubies. Some of y'all, y'all probably ain't never seen a ruby. You don't know what rubies are worth. You know what a zirconium look like. Go ahead. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. Her husband safely trusts in her. Read on. So that he shall have no need of spoil. Go ahead. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. That's a beautiful thing. Read. She seeketh wool and flax. So she going to look for the wool. She looking for the work. Go ahead. And worketh willingly. Worketh what? Willingly. Begrudgingly. Willingly. Grievously. Willingly. What? Willingly. Go ahead. With her hand. Man, she ready to put in that work. Baby, I got you. What you need? I, we got to get this money. Well, let me. Girl, look, hold on. 
Let me get some. She ready to put in work. Go ahead. I don't know how to sew. Let me put this up on YouTube. Oh, that's easy. Go ahead. She is like a merchant ship. She like what? Like a merchant ship. You know, the merchant ships be bringing all kind of stuff. She, whatever you need, she got it. And if she ain't got it, she gonna go get it. Go ahead. She bringeth her food from far. She bring her food from afar. She ain't gonna go around the corner where they got all of that, 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 that bad stuff. They ain't got nothing organic. They got flies at the bottom of the tray. She said, I'm gonna I'm go where the good food at. I'm gonna travel a little ways. I'm gonna get you that good stuff, baby. Go ahead. She rises also while it is yet night. Says she ain't, she ain't afraid of getting up. She ain't loving sleep. She already got it in her mind. I'm going to be up before the sun come up. I got to prepare. You know what? You got to understand, it takes time to prepare real food. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. It takes time to prepare real food. All that ready-made stuff will get you high blood pressure quickly. You got to actually take the time to prepare. That's what we need, sisters. We got to get on that level again. If you on that level, man, I, man, all praises be to the most high. Might have to get some medals and trophies up in here for you. But if you ain't on that level, then we're going we gonna to cheerlead for you so we can get you there, so we can help the nation to get what we needed to get to. That's what time it is. Y'all with me? Boy. Is y'all with me? All right, somebody hear me. Go ahead. And giveth meat to her household. Uh-huh. And a portion to her maiden. And she even hooking the homegirls up. I got you, girl. Go ahead. 16. She considereth a field and buyeth it. She what? Considereth a field and buyeth it. Man, women, we can't do nothing. All we gotta do is shut up. We don't, uh, you man, you stop telling them stories. Bible said this woman she handled business. He trust. See, remember a couple of lines up. It says he trusts her, cause she ain't with the foolishness. She handled business. Says she go. She like I already know what it is. I'm about to. She consider it the field, so she's, let me check this out. Go ahead. With the fruit of her hands. So, oil, oh, verse 16 from the top. She consider it a field and buy it. And then she handled the business. Man got trust in her. He like, man, baby, if it look good to you, go on and get it. I trust you because you be handling your business. She making business moves, buying real estate. That's what it's going to take. While he out here feeding these sheep, he needs somebody to take care of the business. How many of y'all ready to do that if you ain't already doing that? Keep it real. You ain't ready yet? Come on. Is you ready? If you're trying to get ready to do that, raise your hand. You're going to try. Go ahead. With the fruit of her hands, uh -huh. she planted a vineyard. And then on top of that, she go and plant the vineyard herself. She ain't, oh, I got to wait till somebody come here. I'm going to try to hire us. She like, man, give me them gloves. Let me, give me that shovel. Man, give me that shovel. Give me that. My grandma used to get the hoe. Get the hoe. That was her favorite thing to say. Go on, get the hoe. Quan, get the hoe. <laughs> you, about to, <laughs> you about to get them weeds. <laughs> grandma, ain't, we just did the weeds last week. Nah, I see. <laughs> Make you go back out there and do it again. You ain't get them over there. <laughs> Get them weeds up. Go ahead. She girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. Uh huh. So not only do she gird her loins with strength, but she also strengthened her arms, meaning she work out. She do what she got to do to keep her body in check because she know that if her body ain't right, it's going to affect her mind. That's what we got to get at. Straight up. Go ahead. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Uh huh. Her candle goeth not out by night. So not only is she willing to get up early in the morning, she's willing to stay up late to get business handled. Drop down to verse 25. We're going to read 25 through 27. Go ahead. Strength and honor are her clothing. Uh-huh. And she shall rejoice 
in time to come. Go ahead. She opened in her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. So she she already understand her 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 reward is coming. She ain't looking for no reward right now. She like I ain't tripping off of that. I want the kingdom. I want to build. I want to help my nation. I want my husband to have a great name that lasts forever in the nation. I want my kids to be powerhouses in this nation. That's what I'm focused on. It says she opened up her mouth with wisdom. You can't open your mouth with wisdom if you ain't feeding your mind, if you ain't feeding your spirit. You can't show wisdom if you don't practice wisdom. You understand what I'm saying? It says in her tongue is the law of kindness. You can't speak the law if you don't study the law, if you don't know the law, if you don't practice the law. Read. She looketh well to the ways of her household. She look well to the ways of her household. She ain't going to do bare minimum. She ain't going to barely let you make sure you get a little something in your stomach and you got something on and it ain't iron. She going to make sure you looked after. You going to be crisp. You going to be fed well. Your stomach going to be full. <laughs> she going to make a way out of no way. She going to make them all stars look like they, they, they uh, uh, $200 Nikes. She going to polish them bad boys up. Get some new shoestrings and put some new shoestrings in them things. She going to crease the heck out of them pants. She going to starch them. She going to spray and wash them clothes. She going to preserve which She going to be on it. That's what it takes. Go ahead. And eat is not the bread of idleness. And she ain't going to eat, uh, eat the bread of idleness, meaning what? She ain't got time to be sitting around and not doing nothing and getting caught up. She understands, man, I got I, I to gotta, I gotta prepare for this kingdom. That's what it takes. Somebody said, that's too much. You better evaluate your walk. Because this ain't the bootleg church. We really serve the Lord over here. We serve the Lord also by serving our nation and serving one another. Because when it, when it come y'all turn, I'm going to give it to y'all too. Straight up. But it's your turn right now. Go from there. Go to, <laughs> go to Ecclesiasticus, <laughs> chapter 25. 25. And when I say it's your turn, it's going to be our turn. Fair? 25, and let's get uh, 15 through 24. We might skip through a little bit because I got stuff I want to get to. Go ahead. Sirach 25 and verse 15. Uh -huh. There is no head above the head of a serpent. And there is no wrath above the wrath of an, an enemy. Uh -huh. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon. Now hold on. He said I'd rather dwell with a He ain't even lit. He said I'd rather dwell with a lion and a dragon. You ever been in the ring with a lion? You ain't even seen no dragon, huh? But you heard they pretty vicious, huh? Watch this. Read on. Then to keep house. What? Then to keep house. Go ahead. With a wicked woman. With a wicked woman. Now, that's some cold stuff if he said, I'd rather look. Y'all ain't wicked, right? Y'all righteous, right? Oh, at least you trying, I guess. I hope. Look. This man said, I'd rather be in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an enclosement with a lion and a, and a dragon than be in a house with a wicked woman. Now, that's heavy. Go ahead and read. The wickedness of a woman changes her face. What? The wickedness of a woman changes her face. Man, you was looking good a couple of months back. <laughs> but now... Now all of them issues that came up, you don't look as good as I thought you looked. I'm, I'm serious. It changed things. Oh, man, her body was this and that, and all of a sudden, I can't stand her. Like, it changed. Go ahead. And darkeneth her countenance. And darkeneth her countenance what? Like sackcloth. Like sackcloth. All of a sudden, she become Satan manifested in the flesh. She off the chain. Go ahead. Y'all know what sackcloth, how y'all felt it? 
that rashy type material that you don't want on your body. Feel like you fell in a bed of thorns when you put it on. <laughs> That's the woman is talking about. Uncomfortable. Go ahead. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth, it shall, it shall sigh bitterly. Yeah, man, I got to get home. <sighs> you don't want your husband to be like that. Go ahead. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Now, that is a cold statement. How many of y'all done heard that one before? And when you first heard it, you probably felt like, that's ain't that a little bit too much? <laughs> Read it one more time for Bequash. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. You ain't got to be wicked now. So don't make it seem like it's talking about women. No, nah, it ain't talking about righteous women. If you're if you righteous or you're moving towards righteousness, then you good. But if you know you're moving in wickedness, said it ain't no wickedness that can compare. He said all wickedness is but little <laughs> to the wickedness of a woman. Read. Let the portion of a sinner... Oh, hold on. We went back to that portion. Let the what? Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Now, that's cold-blooded. We know what the portion of a sinner is, right? Death. Let the Most High put her to death. Now, that's some cold stuff. But the Bible is telling you what it is. Because the women, a lot of times, oh, we ain't got nothing to say, so we ain't. you got a whole lot of power. And the problem is, a lot of y'all ain't using that power for righteousness. Making that man hit life hell for no reason and making your situation hell. Go ahead. As the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of, a, of the age, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. You ever, you ever uh, who, how many of y'all went to the sand dunes? How old was you when you went to the sand dunes? Okay, Unc, you been to the sand dunes? So, so when you was younger and you went to the sand dunes versus however it was the last time you was when the last time you went, was it a difference? What was the difference? Why? Man. And you run a lot, right? Well, when you was running, it was easy to run, right? How difficult is it to run in that sand? So give you the visuals. Yeah. So it says, as the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the age. It's hard. He said it was difficult. He said to the point where he couldn't do it. So is a wife full of words to a quiet man. A lot of these men, you figure out, oh, he ain't nothing. He ain't shh. Going to leave out. Going to abandon us. He just couldn't take it. Now, I'm not justifying, but I'm just telling you what the Bible say. Some of us are decent with our words. Some men, but some men, they just can't deal with it. I, I, I can't tell her nothing. She can't, I can't beat her. Let me get out. Hey, I know you wasn't no good anyway. You're no good, nigga. How 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 my uh 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 how how my other Israelites that speak Espanol, what they call you? You no good way. <laughs> well, well, give me a word, uh, Ash. The, the bend day, I don't want to say it. What that mean? Bad something. Yeah, you no good that. Boy, they be talking reckless. Go ahead. Verse twenty one. Uh huh. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman. That's why I tell you, because a lot of brothers, y'all be righteous. You got it all together. Man, I ain't getting married for like six years and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, you boy, that beauty got you stumbling. And all of a sudden, you in love. <laughs> Next thing I know, both of y'all walking in. <laughs> you done stumbled at that beauty, huh? Was it the beauty of the booty? You just stumbled at both of them, ain't you? Yep. Go ahead. And desire her not for pleasure. Don't desire a woman for pleasure, man. 
If you're going to get pleasure along with it, get you a righteous woman. Don't fall for the okie doke. Go ahead. A woman, if she maintained her husband, uh -huh. is full of anger. Oh, she hot. This nigga, he don't do nothing about play video games. <laughs> 2K. 2K, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> That's all he do. <laughs> she be mad. Go ahead. Impudence. Impudence. What is impudence? She full of impudence. Impudence is just super disrespect. She's so disrespectful. That's what impudence means. She full of anger. She full of disrespect. Nigga, you can't tell me nothing. I work. What you do, I pay the bills. Go ahead. And much reproach. And much reproach. Read on. A wicked woman abated the courage. A wicked woman will discourage her husband. Not encourage and cause him to have courage, but she'll abate his courage, meaning make his courage drop. He thought I could take on the world. Maybe I can't. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. Go ahead. Make it in heavy countenance. Uh huh. And a wound heart. And a wounded heart. You ever, man, you ever been, man, stuff went down at home and you can't even work? You so broken inside, you trying to be cool. You know, I ain't tripping. But you can't even do your job right because you're so messed up. <laughs> you ain't been in love if you haven't. <laughs> How many of y'all done been there? <laughs> can't even operate. <laughs> That's what a woman to do to a man. Straight up. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all laughing. You know what it is. So don't sit up here and talk about you ain't got, you ain't got no power. You got power. You can destroy that man. And you know it. Go ahead. A woman that will not comfort her husband. Woo, hold on, hold on. A woman that will not comfort her husband. Some of y'all didn't grow up with that figure that shows you the type of love, that shows you that affection. And so now you have a problem giving that affection. You got to fix that. You got to give that man that, that affection. You got to give that man that comfort. You got to give that man that shoulder to lean on. You got to be that pillar of rest for that man. Straight up, right? These men get broken too. Even more broken. Because we be sitting up there all broken and fractured up trying to act like it's all good. <laughs> You'll tell it, girl, that's this, that. And I just, ah, you cry it out. That man, he ain't got, he can't got nobody he can cry to. Nigga, suck it up. It ain't the same. So he needs somebody he can drop some tears on. Go ahead. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress maketh weak hands and feeble knees. Man, you make that man no good. He's no good for anybody, for himself, for your children, for you, for his nation. Go ahead. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, uh -huh. and through her, we all die. And you know who that's referencing, right? Huh? That's referencing our foremother, our foremother Eve. How did that situation go down? Straight up. Let's go, let's go from there. Go to Ecclesiasticus, chapter 14 and 9. Stay in Ecclesiasticus, 14 and 9. Go ahead. Sirach 14 and verse 9. Uh -huh. a, covetous, a covetous man's eyes is not, excuse me, a covetous man's eyes is not satisfied with his fortune. See, that's what happens a lot of times too, man. Men too, but we're dealing with the women. You're not satisfied with your portion. The most high look, he say, this is your portion. And the women are not satisfied with being mothers, with being wise, with being domestic servants. And they covetous. They always looking at what so-and-so got. They looking at this. I wish I had this. I'm not happy. 
I'm not happy. Never talk about whether or not you're making him happy, but it's I'm not happy, and you don't realize, and you hate it when I say it, but it's the truth. If you did everything that you could to focus on his happiness, you'd be happier than what it, what, more than what you ever thought you could be. How does that work? Straight up, you'd be more happier than you've ever been. That was all I needed from that. Go to... Um, And the same thing referencing the foremother Eve. Most High had already put her, she was right up under Adam. He said, Adam, I'm making you the ruler of everything. And this is your help. So she was already above everything else. But it wasn't enough. She didn't, her, her portion wasn't enough. Now that's crazy. You above everything else except for Adam, but your portion is not good enough. And that's how it is. A lot of our women, you, you right there. You the ace boom coon. You the point man. You the go-to. But you still mad because he got a little bit of an up on you. Especially it's crazy because a lot of time the men, babe, what should I do? So you almost like Joseph. You know the story of Joseph, right? Joseph was second only to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh was like, man, Joseph, you run the show. That's what that Proverbs 31 was talking about. I said, hey, man, she, she handled her business. He like, hey, go ahead and buy that. That ain't good enough. Really got to check that spirit. That ain't good enough? Think about that. Uh, let's go from there. Go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Three, uh, one through eight. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one. Uh huh. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. So hold on, lovers of their own selves. We got a lot of our women who are lovers of the own of their own selves versus being lovers of their husbands. Go ahead. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, Go ahead. unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers. So hold on. Without that natural affection, that's another thing. You got to make sure you have that natural affection. Bible goes into it. Our women have lost that natural affection that they once had. You still got to have that natural affection. That natural compassion, uh, compassion, that natural uh, uh, companionship. Go ahead. Just give me Truth verse four. breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Go ahead. Traitors, heady, high-minded. High-minded. A lot of our women have become high-minded. Read. Lovers of pleasure. More than lovers of God. Now that's it right there. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasures. You got to be careful not to think more about your own pleasure versus making, doing everything that you can to make your marriage work, to, make your, to build your house to make your husband happy. You know, it's one of those things. It's like, look, if you take care of him, he's definitely going to take care of you. And we got we to gotta make sure we respect that because that's the way the Most High set it up to be. But right now, you have a whole lot of selfishness in our nation. A lot of selfishness, especially amongst the women, when it comes down to that. Our women get so caught up in consumerism. They get so caught up in pr the pursuit of happiness. They become lovers of pleasure. All right? Um, go ahead. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, uh -huh. from such turn away. From such turn away. That's all I really needed on that, because we we short for time. I kind of got to speed it up to get to what I need to get to. Uh, go, to um, go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1.
Yes. Yeah, I know. That's nice. Chapter 1. Uh, yeah, Wisdom of Solomon, Chapter 1, and um, verse 13 through 16. Wisdom of Solomon, Chapter 1, verse 13. For God made not death, neither had he pleasure in the destruction of the living. So it said, for God made not death. Neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. Read. For he created all things that they might have their being and be in generation of the word where he, well, well excuse me, were helpful and there is no poison of destruction uh -huh. in them, nor the kingdom of death up on the earth. Go ahead. For righteousness is immortal. Say so righteousness is immortal. Go ahead. But ungodly men with their works and words called it to themselves. So the Bible says, but ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. They called death unto them. Go ahead. For when they though, excuse me, for when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to not and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. So ungodly man put us in a situation to cause us to have this relationship with death. Uh, let's go to uh, chapter 2 and let's start at verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. So this is the Bible and it's talking about ungodly men, how they think. And this is how sometimes our people think when we're in an ungodly state of mind. All right. But the Bible says this is how they think. They talk to themselves. But this is not a right. Meaning this is not right. Go ahead. Our life is short uh -huh. and tedious. A lot of times I hear people say that oh, our life is short anyway. It ain't nothing but a bunch of drama. Go ahead. And in the death of man, there is no remedy. Ain't nothing. We all going to die anyway. Go ahead. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. Because that's what, that's what they say. In other words, they deny Christ himself. We all got to go. It ain't no, ain't no, you know what I'm saying? And, and sometimes you might think, oh, I ain't never did that. But you do it in your actions. You act as if he had never arisen for your sake. And that like he never gave his life for you. Go ahead. For we are born at all adventure. Uh -huh. And we shall be hereafter as though we had never been go ahead for the breath in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart uh-huh which being extinguished our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air so i don't know how many of y'all have witnessed you know loved ones pass on but this is you know uh, all right, give me one second. Um, you know, this is pretty much the fate of what we see, you know what I'm saying, everybody go through. So this is how the ungodly is thinking. Go ahead, verse 4. And our name shall be forgotten in time. Uh -huh. That's no what they think because they like, man, ain't nobody going to remember us. But we remember the righteous, right? We remember our forefathers. We remember Moses. We remember Yahweh Shah. Go ahead. And no man shall have our works in remembrance. Uh -huh. And our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud go ahead and shall be dispersed as a mist uh -huh. that is driven away with the beams of the sun go ahead and overcome with the heat go ahead. thereof for our time is very shot excuse me for our time is a very shadow that passes away and after our end there is no returning uh -huh. for it is fast sealed so that no man cometh again Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. See, that's the mindset right there. And this is the mindset that of a lot of our people, specifically when we talk about the women, a lot of our women take on, which is not a right mind, state of mind to be in. It's an ungodly state of mind. It says, come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. In other words, I got to get it now. I got to enjoy my life right now. Like you're going to miss something. The Bible says that this is not our rest. Do you really believe in the kingdom that you say you're trying to make it to? 
Because where's the preparation? If you're trying to do everything here, trying to enjoy here, then you got to ask yourself a question. Why am I not laying up treasures in, in heaven? Why am I not preparing myself for the kingdom? Why am I trying to find happiness here? I'm so diligent in my pursuit of happiness here. I'm spending everything I got. I'm not thinking about my generations that got to be here and endure. We got to think differently. You're not preparing your young. You're trying to live your life. And that ain't how our women are supposed to operate. Go ahead. And let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Instead of saying, you know what, let us be respectful of things, make sure we preserve things. They like just, I, I got it. I'm going to you know, hey, I work hard. You ever heard that being said? I work hard. I work too hard. Go ahead. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine, ointment, uh -huh. and let no flower of the spring pass by us. Spending all of that money on all these things, on the luxurious things, on the amenities. Go ahead. Let us crown ourselves with rubies. With rosebuds. With rubies. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm thinking about the rubies. <laughs> <laughs> let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. So you even trying to beat the flowers before they die. I, I got to have it all. I got to be a queen. I got to, you know, go ahead. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuous. We all got to get it, girl. We all got to get bags. We all got to get Mercedeses. Go ahead. Let, us, let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave token of our joyfulness in every place. For this is our portion, and our lot is this. So in other words, you thinking that's your portion. Most I say, man, that ain't your portion. Don't worry about that. You got to think about preparing for the kingdom. Any questions that pertain to this particular lesson right here, Rock? Any questions? All right, no questions. Let's roll on. We got a little bit less than 30. All right, go from there. Go to... Um, Get Ecclesiasticus 26. This is going to be a heavy one. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26. And um, let's read verse 5 through 8. So rock 26 and verse 5. There be there, excuse me, there be three things that my heart feareth. And for the fourth, I was sore afraid. The slander of a city, the gathering together of an ungodly multitude. Unruly multitude. Excuse me. An unruly multitude and a false accusation. All these were, excuse me, all these are worse than death. So he said all of those things are worse than death, but go ahead. But a, but a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. Man, a woman should not even have the time to think to be jealous over another woman when you realize everything that we need to do it, sh it just shouldn't be shouldn't even be an issue and we got so much of that in our nation and it cripples us it cripples every aspect of our productivity it cripples the trust it cripples the unity Go ahead. And, and a scourge of tongue which co communicated with all. And then you get the blah, 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 telling everybody about this and this and that. Oh, I don't a girl. And it becomes a fiasco. Go ahead. Even an evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. Go ahead. He that had hold of her is as though he held a scorpion. Said as if he held a scorpion. Scorpion will sting and ultimately put you to death. <laughs> Go ahead. A drunken woman and a gather abroad causes great anger, uh -huh. and she will not cover her own shame. It's one thing that I missed. Go back up to verse five. There be three things, verse five. Mm -hmm. There be three things that my heart feareth. And, and for the fourth, I was sore afraid. Uh -huh. The slander of a city. So that's one of them, the slander of a city. Go ahead. The gathering together of an unruly 
multitude. Uh huh. That's two. And a false accusation. Uh huh. All these are worse than death. So hold on. He said all these are worse than death. All those things are worse than a death sentence. But then he goes in and talks about, but a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman and a scourge of the tongue, which communicated with all an evil wife. So what is he saying? Having a wicked woman is worse than a death sentence. Seriously. Now, here's the thing. Listen to what I'm saying, y'all. Listen to what I'm saying, because we get the opportunity to choose life. So listen closely, please, to what I'm saying. Bible says that a, a good woman will double a man's life and he'll live the rest of his life in peace. So we have to automatically, by deductive reasoning, assume that a wicked woman will shorten his lifespan, cut it in half, right? Right? So when the Bible tells you that a wicked woman is worse than a death sentence, what is that saying? Think about it. What is that saying? It's even a scripture that I'm going to get to in a minute talking about Sodom because when Sodom went down, Sodom went down in a day. What happens is you get men in situations and you got a woman that's not willing or has not been willing to reform her ways. You are slowly killing him with an agonizing death. <laughs> Look, go ahead and laugh. Cold-blooded, ain't it? Cold-blooded. I'm going to say it one more time. You are slowly putting that man to death, literally, and you don't even realize it, or maybe you don't care. How many of my sisters care tonight? You don't want to put your man to death, do you? You want him to live. Raise your hand if you want your men to live. If you ain't even got to have a husband, you want your men to live. The way we operate now, that ain't living. The woman say, well, what I got to do with him? Trust me. You doing, doing right by him and being what you need to be for him will make him feel like he can take on the world. But when you, when you ain't in this corner, when you got something to say and you shoot down his dreams, when you're not supporting him and, you, and, you, and, you, and, you, and you're resistant, it causes him to be ineffective, causes him to be unhappy, causes it reduces him to nothing. A slow, painful death. And even if you want to get scientific, it's scientifically proven to be so. It's scientifically proven to be so. His testosterone levels literally began to diminish, thus taking away his drive to, to do anything in life that's worth doing, to achieve anything in life that's worth achieving. Ain't that heavy? Straight up. Let's go from there. Go to, um, let me show you an instance real quick, though. Second Samuel. Because this is how our forefathers was rolling in. You know, it's crazy because we got we to gotta get back to this, man. Second Samuel chapter 6. Let's read verse 16 through 23. Second Samuel chapter six. Second Samuel sixteen, chapter six, verse sixteen. Uh-huh. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, uh -huh. Michael, Saul's daughter, looked. Who? McCall. McCall, Saul's daughter, looked uh -huh. through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. So now, she upset. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing for the sake of time. But she saw him. David went to get back the Ark of the Covenant. They were successful because he didn't know how he was going to do it. And from the enemies. I believe it was the Philistines, if I'm not mistaken. And after they were successful at doing it, man, they were so happy. But all of this was for the Lord. They got to partying. They, did, they handled business first, though. They sent up the proper sacrifices to the Most High, gave him his just due, and then they began to rejoice and be happy and 
play music and dance. But she saw him and she got upset. She was mad about it. So let's drop down uh, to verse 20. Then David returned to blessing his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, whom uncovered himself today in the eyes of the... Hold on. Give verse 19 real quick. Let's read through it, though. And he dealt... Excuse me. And he dealt among... Excuse me. And he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men. So he was amongst the women as well. And that's where probably the issue went. Came really came in like she got ticked off about it. She felt some kind of way. Drop back down to verse 20. Then David returned to blessing his household, and Michal the daughter of Saul came out to meet David. Uh-huh. And said, "How glorious was the king of Israel." So now she want to be uh sarcastic. Ah, oh, you oh yeah, you was glorious today, huh, nigga? Go ahead. Today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servant. I ain't worried about the men, but she talking about you going covering yourself in front of the handmaids, doing the extras. Go ahead. As one of the vain follow fellows, shamely uncovered himself. And you sitting up there showing your biceps and you, ugh, you just like them other niggas out there. Go ahead. And David said unto McCall. It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father. So David checked her. He said, look, it was before the Lord. In other words, man, I'm doing this before the Most High. I'm doing this before the Most High. Who did what? Which chose me before thy father. Ooh, that cut like a dagger. Because her daddy was the, was the king. And then the Most High had to put him to death. Man, that cut like a dagger. He said he chose me before. He, the Most High chose me over your daddy. You got the nerve. You wouldn't dare say talk to your daddy like this. Go ahead. And before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. He said, therefore, I'm going to do what the heck I want to in front, in, in, before the Most High. You got nerve, woman. <laughs> Go ahead. And I will yet be more vile than dust. He said, and if you really want me to get stank, I'm going to be more stankier than what you thought I was a minute ago. Go ahead. And will be base in mine own sight. He said, I'm going to stoop lower than what I even thought I could stoop. Go ahead. And of the man maid servants uh -huh. which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. So what is he saying right there? He said, and, and, and since you're acting the fool, he said, of the, of the women of the maid service, of them, I'm going to be had in honor. I'm going to go amongst them and I'm going to let them honor me. Because I know that's what you're tripping off of. That's why the scriptures say, you know, for a woman to be jealous over another woman, it's counterproductive. She just got in her feelings and felt some type of way. And, and the crazy thing about it is our men, us, a lot of times we bow it down when we shouldn't be bowing it down. We be, oh, you know, trying to save face and stuff instead of saying you out of order. You out of your jurisdiction. Go ahead. Therefore, McCall, the daughter of Saul, had no children until the day of her death. And the Most High put a judgment on her for that. That's a cold judgment. I know some of the young ones are like, what? I never read this. Most high don't play games. That's the crazy thing because a lot of times nothing happened to you at that very moment. So you think the most high ain't going to deal with you. You be having all kind of hell in your life trying to figure out what's going on. And you don't remember some of the mess that you done did. Some of the out of orderness that you done been out over the years. Man, you can't play with the most high. You definitely can't touch his anointed. And you got to start dealing with them differently. Man, we are we a holy nation and a royal priesthood. You got to stop looking at your man as, as, as niggas and Mexicans. These are Israelites. These are men of the Lord. And you got to start treating them accordingly. You got to start walking like a woman of the Lord. That makes sense? Go from there. Go to Isaiah chapter 3. I already knew I wasn't going to get to everything. I, ooh, I hate that. Ugh. 
Isaiah chapter 3, let's get verse 12, and then we're going to jump down to verse 16. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. Uh -huh. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. He said the women rule over our people. And that's a curse from the Most High. It's totally out of order. And that's what happens because some of the women are like, I don't rule over my man. If your man can't tell you what to do and it ends up being done the way you want it done, then you're ruling. You're ruling. Go ahead. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. Verse 16. Moreover, the Lord said, excuse me, moreover, the Lord said, because the daughter of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks. Hold on. The daughters of Zion are haughty. Haughty means arrogantly superior and disdainful. You probably don't know what disdainful means, so I got the definition of that too. Disdainful, showing contempt or lack of respect. Oh, you probably don't know what content is, all right? Contempt means the feeling that a person or a thing is beneath consideration, worthless, or deserving of scorn. So when it says the daughter's of Zion are haughty, you, you are very disrespectful. A lot of our Israelite women have become disrespectful, and it was not so. It did not, it wasn't like that from the beginning. Go ahead. And walk with stretched forth necks and wanting eyes, walking and mincing. As they go uh -huh. and making it tinkling with their feet. Uh, you got when you read all of that, man. Read, read uh, uh, verse seventeen. It talk about how he gonna start discovering your secrets and doing things to you. Drop down to verse um, verse twenty five. Thy men shall fall by the sword. Thy what? Thy men shall fall by the sword. You wondering why Israelite men are going through hell? And you never even considered that it's, it's directly linked to how our women are operating. It's a curse. Literally, this is what the Bible says. If you read that all contextually, because I don't want you to think that I'm taking anything out of context. He says as a result of the woman, women operating in this fashion, the men are getting put to death. Thy men shall fall by the sword and what? And thy mighty in the, in the war. And thy mighty in the war. We are dying out here because we trying to get this kingdom and we can't get it until y'all get it right. And the most high like, all right, I got something for you. I got some judgment for you. And he tearing our butts up because <laughs> we can't, you can't. And I'm going to give you a proper example when you get a chance to read the history. Moses and his wife. Moses needed to get his son circumcised. His wife didn't want to do it. The Most High, let it be known to Moses, if she doesn't circumcise that child, I'm going to put you to death. Am I lying? Nope. Y'all didn't read that in scripture? Stop thinking that your actions and what you do only affect you. It affects your husband as well. It affects your men. And we got to take that responsibility. Uh, go from there. Um, I'm going to have you write down a couple. Uh, write down Ecclesiastic is 26 and 3. That goes into uh, being given over into uh, an impudent mind, which means a disrespectful mind. You don't want to be given over into a disrespectful mind. Go from there. Go to Lamentations chapter 4, and let's start at verse 1. Yeah, Pastor. Jeremiah 4 and 1, 
I mean, excuse me, Lamentations 4 and 1. How has the gold become dim? So that's the question. How has the gold become dim? Read. How was, how was the most fine gold changed? Uh-huh. And, excuse me, the stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. He said the most fine gold and, 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 and the stones, meaning the jewels. He said, how are these things become as if they are nothing, treated like they're nothing. Go ahead. Let's see who he's talking about. The precious stone, excuse me, the precious sons of Zion comparable, comparable to fine gold. He said, brothers, you comparable to fine gold. But are you getting treated like gold? Go ahead. How are they esteemed as earthen pictures you getting treated like you some rubber or some play play-doh or some clay nigga you ain't nothing but clay you ain't no gold <laughs> you measuring a man by his pockets go ahead the work of the hands of the potter uh-huh even the sea monsters draw out the breast. Uh huh. They give suck to their young ones. So it says even the sea monsters, they're going to take care of their young. Go ahead. The daughter of my people has become cruel. They wasn't always cruel, but they've become cruel. Go ahead. Like the ostrich is, excuse me, like the ostrich in the wilderness. In the wilderness. You can write down Job chapter 39, verse 13 through 17 to read about the ostrich. The ostrich does not have good, take good care of its young, of the eggs. It puts it in a place where it can easily be stepped on or preyed upon. We're putting our kids in harm's way. Go ahead. The tongue of the sucking child cleave it to the roof of his mouth uh -huh. for thirst. The young children ask bread, and no man breaketh, excuse me, breaketh it so, so unto this, them. This is happening also on a physical level, but this is also talking about on a spiritual level. Our kids are not being fed spiritually how they need to be fed by the mothers. It's your place to make sure that those kids are embraced and nourished and brought up. Thus saith the Lord. A lot of times that's not happening in the capacity that it should be happening. And we've got to change that. Go ahead. They that did feed delicately are desolate in the, in the streets. Uh -huh. They that were brought up in the scarlet embrace dung hills. Said we was once brought up in scarlet, now we embrace boo-boo. Go ahead. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom. That's heavy right there. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom. Go ahead. That was overthrown as in a moment, and no hand stayed on her. Now, what is this saying? It said, man, Sodom went out. Sodom got towed up. He said, but our judgment is worse than Sodom's. Why? Because we living with this, and we're struggling to get out of that mindset. Having our women in that type of mindset is killing us, destroying us. It makes our enemies, it, give, it, it gives them the advantage to do as they will with us because we can't get our households in order. He said that judgment is worse. The women being haughty, the women being cruel, the women operating in the, in the space that they operating is a worse punishment than that what he gave uh, Sodom. That's what the Bible says. We got to change that. And I'm going to cry from the top of the rafters until we do. All of y'all might not make it. I wonder how many of y'all are, are, are determined to make it. And in order to make it, you got to make a change. And for those of y'all that it's a little bit easier for, you got to reach out to those that are having a hard time and pull them and say, look, we got to change, sister. You got to hold them accountable. We got to change. We got to turn this thing around. Because the way our women are operating as a majority right now, I'm telling you, to Zaya Juan Ariala says, it's unacceptable. And that's coming from the Most High. It's unacceptable. You shouldn't be so many years in the truth and you still out of order. You still popping off at the mouth. You still getting attitudes. You still doing X, Y, and Z. What are you learning? How's your spirit growing? Straight up. I'm asking you the question. It's not, right? It's unacceptable. 
Got a lot of other stuff, but I know I ain't gonna be able to get to it. Uh, so let me give you another good one. Let me give you a couple of them, and then I'm gonna go probably to my last one, maybe two if I can squeeze it in. All right, uh, write down Proverbs 1 and 22. And that talks about uh, how long will the scorner delight in their scorning? Because you know what a scorner is, right? A scorner is a person who expresses contempt or disdain for someone or something. So a scorner is just somebody just being disrespectful. And a, a lot of times our women are in a place where they are scorners and they seem to delight in their scorning, like it's not a big deal. Said, how long are they gonna continue to do that and think that it's okay? Proverbs 9, 7 through 9 says, reprove a scorner and they will hate you. And that's another thing that's happening. A lot of times our women don't want to hear that correction. You call them out on their stuff and they, not, they don't want to hear it. You setting yourself up for, for, for death. You setting yourself up to be the one that say, didn't I uh, cast out demons in your name? And he say, depart from me. I never knew you. You setting yourself up for that. Go from, uh, uh, write down um, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10. Because we read that a lot of times. We think it's talking about those that are without, but it's also talking about those that are within. A lot of our women, our people, period, but our women have not received the love of the truth. You start keeping the commandments, but it's grievous to you. You don't love it. You don't love who you are as an Israelite and holding down what you're supposed to hold down. And you got to change that. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10. Write down Ecclesiasticus chapter 40, verse 18 through 23. Because it goes into the love of wisdom. Trust me, a lot of y'all haven't gotten a chance to take that good drug. But when you love wisdom and you begin to have wisdom, it becomes addictive. The Bible says it's better than wine. <laughs> So try that out. That was uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 40, 18 through 23. Um, this is a big one. This is one of my favorite ones right here. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, verse 13 through 18. And it talks about a woman uh, having a mind, uh, uh, being well instructed. And it also talks about how a woman becomes more beautiful in her maturity. As bad as you thought you was when you was a young spring chicken, you was just all right then. You look a whole lot better when you're older and more mature and you're handling business. That's when you really look good. When the bills is paid, boy, you look good. Huh? That, that one right there was Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, 13 through 18. This is a big one right here. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. And uh, it talks about, that's another thing, being joyfully instructed. Talk about her. She want to be up under his tree and be up under the shade of his tree and eat of the fruit. Listen to him. Respect his mind. Be taught by him. And then also goes into the aspect, she begins to tell the other sisters, be careful not to wake my, my, my beloved. He don't want to be woke, woke up yet. Let him wake up. Like, that's the type of mentality we got to have, the type of honor we got to have when it comes down to your men. All right? Now, nigga, get up. <laughs> All right? A couple more and we done. Uh, this is another big one. Ecclesiasticus chapter 34, verse 23 through 26. And that goes into the aspect of when one buildeth and another plucketh down, what else do they have but labor? That's, that's what's so hard in the Israelite relationships and these marriages. It feel like we just laboring, but we ain't getting nowhere because one is building up and the other one is plucking down. You got to start helping them build. Stop plucking down. Stop plucking down with your words. Plucking down with your, uh, uh, with your doubts and start building up. All right. Helping them build. And it also uh, talks about, which is really big, about doing the same thing over and over again. It says if you do the same thing over and over again, you go and repent and ask for forgiveness and humble yourself, but you go back and do the same thing, then the Most High is not going to hear you. Stop thinking you can be disrespectful. Oh, I'm sorry. And then you're going to be disrespectful a day or two later. The Most High is going to cut you off. Who, who want to be cut off because of something simple that you can fix? It's not a good look. We almost done. Um, this one was inspired by Ashna Pash. 
Second Esther's chapter seven, verse fifty-six. That was an excellent lesson that you did on Tuesday. I, so a lot of us we don't consider that we're, we're going to suffer for these things that we're doing when we die, and we got to remember that there is a judgment. <laughs> You might think you're getting away right now. You ain't getting away. So stop acting like you're getting away, like your attitudes and all of that ain't nothing, and you're going you're gonna to have to pay for that. Um, uh, second Esther chapter 7 and verse 56. Uh-huh. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. Um, live how you want, but you will be judged. Trust me. A lot of people had that mentality of women, like you can do what you want to do, but you're going to be judged for it. And then also it goes into the aspect of being a babe in this truth or not, you better make sure you get to work. Don't use that as an excuse or a crutch because you knew. Get to work. Uh, last one I'm going to tell you, and then we're going to go to this last one and we'll be done. Ecclesiastic Cuss 5, 2 through 7, talks about taking your sin seriously. You got to take it seriously. Let's go to Isaiah 4 and 1. And we, we end it right here. So this is food for thought, y'all. I know this wasn't a hooping and hollering message, but in the spirit, I just felt like it was needed. Isaiah 4 and 1. In that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. So now here's the thing. A lot of people look at that seven women. Ah, I want to hear that. That's the wrong thing that you're focusing on. One of the things is that the, the, the fact that the scripture says seven, it gives a specific number. When you look at the number seven, seven means what? Completion. So when it says, and in, the, in that day, seven women... We're also looking at the aspect of women who are complete because right now most of our women are incomplete. They don't have the righteous mindset. You're going to finally get women that connect and get into that righteous mindset saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. What is that saying? Because we know that the man is supposed to be the provider, right? That's what everybody, oh, the man, man. they understand. They say, look, that's the least of my worries. I'm not worried about that. I can handle that part. But what? Only what? Only let us be called by thy name. Take away our reproach. So what is this talking about? They finally focus on what they should have been focused on all along, which is what? Getting this kingdom. Salvation. It's time for y'all to focus on salvation. Stop focusing on all of the nonsense. You too focus on, on self, on feelings. And on, on all of the mess. Focus on salvation. No man should cause you to get off of your square to knock yourself out of the box to lose your salvation. If you're so caught up into this and into that, then may, maybe you ain't going to make it. Verse 2. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and, glorif Go and glorious. Go ahead. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent. And comely for them that are escaped of Israel. So and people try to say, oh, this talking about in the kingdom. This is talking about before the kingdom. This is happening now. Another thing, you know, without getting into the controversial uh, 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 talk or uh, uh, topic, what women got to understand, too, you know, that becomes a, 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 a taboo, you know, talking about the, the, the women, the multiple women and all of that type of stuff. But here's the thing. Why should it take women coming to the table and presenting themselves to these men for you to get right? You should be, you, you should be doing everything to be all that you can be in a righteous manner. That's, that's what it should be. It shouldn't take, because when you read above that, we read it earlier, it's saying all of these things are leading up to this right here. We, ain't, we can't even get the kingdom until y'all get it right. According to the Bible, that's heavy. I don't know if y'all realize how heavy that is. That's heavy. 
We ain't getting the kingdom. I don't care what we trying to do. It's only so much that we can do. But this, you guys are a very important component of actually getting the kingdom. Let's read this real quick. Go ahead. Verse 3. Yep. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Go ahead. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughter of Zion. Uh -huh. And shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. From the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment. By the spirit of what? By the spirit of judgment. Man, judgment is coming. Judgment is here. Probably saying, man, I'm going through this. Women going through that. We going through this. We going through that. Crazy thing is the men go through it with you. Because we won. But the women are really being tried right now. That's that judgment right here. It's judgment. And you got to take heed. Don't take this like it. Like, like, ah, oh, it's his eye wand tripping. Really take heed to this. Go ahead. And by the spirit of burning. And by the spirit of burning. So it's time to get it right. That's part one. Part two will be coming soon to a school near you. All praise be to the most high.